Hello everyone, Nurlnars Hands here, and today we have a couple of mystery boxes sent to me by one of my viewers, Julian's Random Project. And that is pretty awesome. You are a cool dude. Thanks, Julian. So, here are the two boxes that I got in the mail, and they are mystery boxes. What could be inside? Could it be nothing? A hundred dollars? Or even better, a mystery box with a hundred dollars in it? Well, let's open one of them and find out. Aha! An inverter! I bet you're not surprised. Yes, this is a Schumacher. Uh, what size inverter is this? I don't even know. Oh, 750 watts. It says right on it. Inverter. And it is broken, or so I'm told. That's why they were sent to me. Uh, this uh, Julian Random Projects guy, he uh, viewed some of my videos. And he actually made some videos of his own on repairing videos, on re repairing inverters and such. And he has some of the same tools that I do. I noticed he also has a Fluke multimeter, which is awesome. I wish I had one of those. In any case, go ahead and check out his videos. Leave him a comment, give him your support. So we have one 750 watt inverter here. And let's see what's in the other mystery box. And wow, look at that. Four more. <coughs> Now, I actually saw these for sale on a uh, popular auction site a little while ago. I didn't pop on them because they were selling 10 in one batch, and I didn't really need 10, so this is uh, very convenient for me. I get four of them, plus a larger one, and this one's actually pretty, pretty cool. Uh, Julian's Random Project also went through uh, some reviews on these, so I'm not going to do that, but I just wanted to show you what I got here and uh, also do at least one thing with them, which we'll get to. Now, he did mention that a lot of these, the switch was all that's bad, and I can see right away the switch on this one is bad, so maybe that's the only problem, I don't know. But there's three others in here that uh, are identical inverters in various conditions. So I have done repair videos on inverters before, a pretty thorough one on a Whistler 1600 watt inverter. So if you're interested in repairing inverters, I'd encourage you to check that one out. I also made one on repairing a 400 watt inverter, as well as uh, a couple of others, I forget exactly what they were, so I have enough of those out there, I'm not going to make another one like that, however, what I decided I'm going to do with these, at least initially, is to go through these five inverters, and just take a look at them, and try to figure out what is wrong with each one, and we'll just go through these very quickly, we're not going to actually repair them, just do a cursory analysis and see, well, what is wrong with this, is it repairable, what do I need to fix? And keep in mind that when we go through these and identify what's wrong, that may not be the only thing wrong. There may be other things. We would have to replace the components and then load test it with both a stress test for overcurrent and a stress test for thermal reasons. And who knows what else might be wrong with it. But uh, we're just going to take a cursory look at these five inverters and see if we can figure out what's going on. We'll also take a look at their build quality and such and see what I think about them. And let's take a quick look at the four 410 watt inverters first, just to see what condition they are in. This one has both fuses, which both appear to be good to the naked eye, and the knobs are included. The fan seems to be reasonably clean. It seems to spin freely, and it's dirty but otherwise okay, except for this switch. But that may not be the only thing wrong with it, so let's do a quick look at some of the other parameters. Hopefully you can... Uh, read this multimeter here on camera. So it's on ohms, and I'm just going to see if the input is shorted. Hmm. Completely open circuit. That seems unlikely. Switch my leads. And, uh, yeah. Okay. So the input's not shorted. How about the output? This is also a good test to do. It doesn't necessarily uh, guarantee that either the input or output stage is working, but if either are shorted, you know there's a problem. So on this inverter, the input and output stage are not shorted, and the switch doesn't work. There's a good chance it's just the switch. We'll open it up and check that a little bit later. But on to the next inverter. Inverter number two. This one looks a lot cleaner, definitely. It has two 25 amp fuses, which is about right for a 410 watt inverter. And uh, the switch works. Hooray! But it says input shorted on the back. Julian put this note on here, I am assuming, to let me know that the input is shorted. 
And if I put my multimeter on the input, I am pretty sure that we'll find out that it is shorted. Now I haven't looked at these yet, this is the first time that I've taken them out of the box. So we'll see what's going on here, but... Hmm. Maybe I'm just not getting a good connection on these. Yes indeed, the input is shorted. Zero ohms. How about the output? Sometimes when one gets shorted, the other gets shorted too during uh, some severe circumstances. I've definitely seen that happen. In this case, the output isn't, so hopefully it's just transistor 2 in the input. We'll set this one aside and come back to it. Once again, the input fuses look alright, but they're different fuses, so on one of these two units, the user probably replaced them. Not a good sign. Moving on. Here's another one. Dead short on input. And uh, again, the switch works. The fuses appear to be good, and uh, there's no knobs on it, unfortunately. So nobody wants an inverter that you can't connect anything to. So if you have an inverter like this, it's pretty easy to get it fixed. All you need to do is go to the hardware store and buy a metric nut and a metric washer and stick it on here. And uh, just carry this into the hardware store and go buy what you need. Pretty cheap. And uh, then it works again. Who cares if it's a fancy plastic knob? As long as the nuts on it, you can connect it up. But they're almost always metric, so you'll have to go to the metric section. For those of you in Europe, you just go to the uh, ordinary section, I suppose. But for us here, the metric stuff is a lot more expensive, unfortunately. Just to get two of these, it's often nearly a dollar where I live. If they were standard, I'd probably be paying 15 cents when I walk out the store. But anyway, the input on this one definitely is shorted. So let's check the output. I'm not checking the USB port here. I don't have a, a great device for doing that. You can stick a multimeter in here and catch the leads, but in any case, I'm not checking that at the moment. So, once again, input shorted. We'll uh, open it up and see what's going on a little bit later. X inverter. Number four of the 410 watt variety. Once again, missing the input knobs. And the fuses. So, I can't really tell if it's shorted. But, uh, you know what? Switch works. Uh, we're just going to open this one up and see what's going on. But uh, I do have fuses I can put in here, so that's not a problem. But uh, we'll move on to the 750 watt inverter. Now this one actually is, I think, a pretty nice product. 750 watts, it's in a nice compact case. Has a reasonably large diameter fan, so hopefully it's not too noisy. But it probably doesn't work. At least that's how it was advertised. So, once again, same basic tests. We'll hook our multimeter up to the input terminals and see what's going on. Not shorted. That's pretty normal. The uh, measured resistance will rise as the multimeter charges up those input capacitors, eventually reaching near infinity. And uh, we'll also check the output. Not shorted there either. So this one we're going to have to open up. I'm not sure what's wrong with it. I could definitely just connect these up to a battery through a current limiting device and see if they work. There's always a chance they will. But I want to see what's inside regardless. So let's open them up. First of all, let's check out the one with the bad switch. The switch doesn't work. So we're going to open this thing up and see if it's really as simple as that. Here's the inverter with the broken switch. And both end covers are held on by four Phillips screws. Pretty typical construction. A extruded anodized aluminum case that assumedly the FETs are bolted to on both sides. Based on these screws, it appears that is the case. And a stamped steel bottom plate. Very inexpensive construction and very effective. It's uh, been around for a very long time and it's very good. Many others have tried something different and I'm not entirely satisfied with any of their products, so this is the way to go. But the four Phillips screws, there are three different sizes of standard Phillips screwdrivers. Never mentioned this before, most people already know, but I just think it's interesting to say number one, number two, number three. And you don't have all of your screwdrivers unless you have Phillips bits in at least this many sizes, preferably one larger and one smaller than this, in various lengths and at various configurations. You can never have enough screwdrivers. In any case, let's just take this apart. <clears throat> I will take out all of these screws one by one and hopefully not lose them. I'm not putting them in a container like I should, but I'm just going to do this quickly here and take a look at all of these inverters. Very 
There's the end panel off. And we can't really see much. So let's take off the bottom plate. And there is the inside of a 400 watt Schumacher inverter with a bad switch. I'll give you a close up here so you can see what's inside. And this is the inside of the 410 watt Schumacher power inverter. This is the end plate with the broken switch and it just connects up to the circuit board. The outlets are wired in parallel just like you would expect. The input side there is a black wire that runs from negative goes down to the circuit board. Positive goes through both of these fuses in parallel and then runs to the circuit board. There isn't a whole lot to say about this inverter in terms of its build quality because it is so average. And average in this case is good. A lot of these uh, cheap inverters, they put really complete junk in them. But uh, anyway, this one looks alright. Not going to complain about it too much. But there are a few issues that I want to point out. First of all, this heat sink over here. Now, look how twisted that is. And it is almost contacting the FET leads. So I'm going to take the screw over here, loosen it, turn this back so that it's straight, and then uh, that will be fixed. And then also a bigger issue, I'm not sure how well you can see it on camera, but <clears throat> it was assembled very, very poorly. Over here you can hopefully see that, that uh, diode most likely on uh, camera left, uh, stage right, has the uh, barrel pulled out of the via. Is it even soldered on the other side anymore? Well, I assume so, because it worked at one point, but it is pulled out now. So, I have to disassemble this to uh, fix that, which is uh, unfortunate. You can also notice that that one over here is much higher than that one over here. That's clearly an assembly error. So, I will remove the circuit board from this uh, extruded aluminum housing. I assume that some of you are interested in seeing that anyway. And it just takes a couple of screws on this side and a three or something on this side. So I'll take that out and uh, turn the camera back on. And these screws, by the way, take the next larger size screwdriver. And here's the inverter fully disassembled. The case, which is just a simple aluminum part. The bottom, a bunch of fasteners inside this container, which you may not be able to see on camera. But, uh, and then the actual inverter itself. This is the back side of the inverter, and the front side that you've already seen. And you can see that there are surface mount components on the back side. Surface mount capacitors, resistors, <coughs> diodes, FETs, etc. And three control ICs. Now this is pretty unusual. Usually inverters like this are controlled by uh, some very simple stuff. Op amps and things like that. They actually use three ICs on this, and I don't know what to think about that. Is it good that they put more into it, or bad that they did not design it efficiently? I'm not really sure, but a lot of this is hand soldered. You can see the solder flux just globbed on the board. Pretty typical of a low value inverter like this. But it is kind of interesting. In any case, I did notice that this transistor on this side that I pointed out with the barrel ripped out, that's just the gate. I should have looked at that first before I disassembled it, I suppose, but that's just the gate, and the gate tells the FET, or whatever this is, just to turn on and off. So, it's pretty uh, irrelevant. Um, and this is the input side, by the way, so it is a FET. Uh, I also should have noticed that, but didn't. <clears throat> In any case, that's the input side. The other side is the output side. It goes through the transformer, and uh, through this diode bridge, four diodes. And from there, it goes through the uh, four output stage transistors, which is just a uh, an H-bridge, essentially. So, that's your full inverter, and I will now test these two transistors to make sure that they're not shorted, and also these four to make sure that they are not shorted. But I expect everything to be okay except the switch. Let's find out.